What's up? Welcome back. Thanks so much for following along as we build out a newsletter platform. This is the episode where we're going to talk about discovering and subscribing to newsletters. We're sort of turning our attention from being an author to now being a reader. We've already got uh, the setup for authors to create newsletters and to create issues for those newsletters. We also have some Stripe Connect account onboarding already done. If you're curious about any of these pieces, head back and watch the previous episodes. But today what I wanted to do is work on our dashboard just a bit so we can list out all of the possible newsletters that we could subscribe to as a reader. So the first thing I want to do is jump over here and open up our pages controller because I think that's where, yeah, that's where our dashboard route is being rendered currently. So let's say at newsletters is newsletter.all. Eventually we might want to have some searching and filtering and sorting, but for now that should get us started pretty well. Okay, so what we want to do here is make a list of newsletters. We can actually go to our newsletter index grab a table that we've already got going on for the authors. And we're going to sort of reuse this a bit, but instead of saying a list of the newsletters that you author and having this button, we should say uh, maybe like a list of newsletters you can subscribe to or like, you know, subscribe to get started or something. Subscribe, get started. Okay. And then we're going to remove this, add a newsletter button. And here we go. All right. The other thing is I kind of want to split this into two columns. On one column, we'll show all of the newsletters. Maybe at the top, we can show the newsletters they're subscribed to. Then below that, the list of other newsletters they could subscribe to. And then on the right column, we want to show the latest issues for each of the newsletters that someone is subscribed to. So let's look in Tailwind UI's components here and see if there's any sort of UI that might give us some columns multi-column layout. Okay. I'm not sure this is actually what we want, but let's take a look. Oh, look at that. That is actually pretty nice, right? We would have sort of a, our, our menu on the left, and then we would have these two columns here. Let's take a look and see what this looks like in practice. So we have the main area and then we have an aside. Okay. So inside of our application HTML ERB, I don't know if we already, okay. So we sort of already have this main container, but for the dashboard view, I think we might also want to put this in here. So let's open this up. We'll paste it in. Actually, that is not what we want. We want to grab this here. Okay. And all right. So let's say, what if we just put our newsletters list into that column? What does this end up looking like? Okay. That did not work as expected. I think we might need this parent div also. All right. That gives us some columns for sure. Um, that is not exactly how I expected this to uh, fall out though. So let's go back over to our application HTML ERB. Now, one of the things that we're running into is that we have this div here where everything is sort of yielded into. Um, so what we want to do is I'm not sure why this is ending up on the left like that. Let's come back over here to our side and then we'll say like secondary column, just put some content in there so we can see where that's showing up. And it looks like that is the, okay. So that's actually the first column. So let's move our table of newsletters into the aside. That's actually our secondary column, but it's appearing first. Okay. So this looks pretty good. Instead of having title and these edit buttons, what I think we want to have is a view and we'll just change this to view. And this will also be view. And in now we want to have this be the newsletter path. This will be like the show path for the newsletter. So if we come back over here and refresh, now we can view the newsletter. Now viewing the newsletter should let us also subscribe. So we'll, we'll come back and work on that in a minute, but for now, this is looking pretty good. So we've got our list of newsletters, and then we also separately want our list of issues. Now, one thing that's going to get pretty, um, pretty wild, pretty quick is how big this dashboard view is and how hard it becomes to maintain. So I'm considering breaking out 
the list of newsletters into a partial and then the list of issues into a partial. But for now, let's also just go back to our issues index, grabbing all of this and pasting it up in here. Um, this is obviously not super, super maintainable, but it should work for our use cases. So in this case, for issues, what we want to do is go back to the static or to our pages controller, and we need to have uh, at issues. Now, this is going to be the issues where the current user is subscribed. So for now, we'll just say issue.all, but we need to like come back uh, and like limit this to only the current user's um, paid newsletters, basically. Okay, so let's see, refresh. All right, so now we have the list of the issues. We do need to modify some of the language here. So um, let's say, uh, read on friend. <laughs> okay, here we go. And the, the spacing here is a little bit messy. We can also remove this button. Okay, refresh. And then um, here, I think we actually had PX4 or something, which, no, maybe not. Uh, maybe it was in here, PX4. Okay, I'm not sure I like how that is turning out. What I wanna do is move this, move the content here over to the right a little bit. So where is this PX4? There we go. All right, so that's looking like we've got a little bit more breathing room. And then instead of edit for issues, we want this to be like read. And the link here can go to the issue path, which is where they can read back issues. So we'll say read, and that brings us to the issue show page, which again, doesn't exist, but we are making some progress. Okay, so this is the list of newsletters that we could subscribe to. We also need a list that we are already subscribed to. So in our newsletters table down here, we'll probably want like uh, newsletters and maybe subscribed newsletters. And those are actually gonna end up being basically the same. And then maybe we have like, I don't know, some break in between those rows where we will have, yeah, so we'll have like subscribed newsletters and Right now, because we don't have that concept, we'll just say like subscribed newsletters is the empty array so that we have like this placeholder basically. Okay. And so hmm, I'm wondering if we want to have another like table heading in between them just so that we can break this up a little bit more. I don't know. Let's see. Okay. So um, here we can say like, find a new title and then here we can say um, your newsletters something like that and then it's empty so we could also say something like uh, if it's empty then show the empty like the empty status but for now what we're going to do is make it so that when we go to the show page for a newsletter we will let maybe we put the title of the newsletter and the number of issues or something. So newsletter show, we'll put um, here, we'll just say at newsletter.title. And then we're gonna want some like button to subscribe, right? And what does this look like? Okay, when we subscribe to the newsletter, we're gonna implement, like we need to go through a process to enter some payment details and that will ultimately create a subscription for us inside of Stripe that will collect payment from us on a monthly basis until we cancel. And so when we click on this subscribe button, we want to go through a checkout flow that will subscribe us to this new newsletter. There's a couple different moving parts here. Number one, we need to keep track of which newsletters users are subscribed to and a newsletter can have many readers and a reader can read many newsletters so we need to have some sort of join table and that join table might be like a membership table where someone a reader is a member of an audience or a member of the audience for a given newsletter so let's create this table in the database we'll say rails g model membership 
and it will be related to the newsletter. It will be related to the reader. And I think I'm questioning whether we want to do this, but I think we can also store the ID of the Stripe subscription that will be created on this table, as well as a status of whether or not it is being is is active, which means that it's being paid for. So let's add Stripe subscription ID here. Let's also add um, status, which can be an integer and, or let's just leave status as a string. We'll use the Stripe subscription status as the status for a membership. When someone subscribes, we'll create a membership for them. And we will, oh, we because we're gonna start by using Stripe checkout and redirecting through the checkout flow, we might also wanna store the Stripe checkout session ID on this membership so that it's a little bit easier inside of the webhook handler to know um, where this came back through. And I think this should be good. So recall too that this reader is actually gonna be a user model under the hood. So let's create that model and let's open up this create memberships migration. Okay, so it is going to belong to a newsletter that is for the newsletters table. So our foreign key is good. For readers though, we need this to be two table users. Our Stripe subscription ID will be null initially until we come back and have uh, completed our checkout session or not. Um, yeah, we'll just say this is null, def null false default is gonna be pending, we'll just say. Um, and is there anything else? Oh, we might also want to make sure that we don't have any readers who have duplicate memberships. So one way that we can do that is add an index on the memberships table for both newsletter ID and reader ID. And that will make sure that the, um, the combination of these two IDs is always unique, which would mean that you can't have one reader that is subscribed to the same newsletter multiple times. Uh, anything else that we might want here? Oh, we probably want to add an index to look up the membership by Stripe subscription ID so that we can look it up really quickly based on their ID. Um, and I think that is a solid start. So we'll say Rails DB migrate to change the database. Then we'll open up our membership table and make sure that we have two belongs to associations. For our reader, recall that we need to set the class name as user. And a user can now, uh, it's gonna have many memberships where it is the reader. Um, and then a, a newsletter will also have many memberships. And okay, I think this is looking good. Uh, let's go create a new controller called memberships. And this controller, at least initially, the way that I'm thinking about this is it will have only one route and that will be to create a membership. Um, so from the newsletter show page, we'll have this form, we'll actually submit and create a, news, uh, a newsletter membership. So we'll open up our memberships controller here, add a create method. And because this reader must be logged in, let's make sure that they are authenticated. Now our create method here is going to create a new membership and it's gonna require the membership params, which we'll define down here. Params, params .require membership permit. And what do we actually know here? We, we definitely are gonna have the newsletter ID I'm trying to think of what else we might have. Ah, right, okay. So before we even create this membership, okay, so before we initialize the membership, we're gonna create a new thing called a checkout session. And this is an API call to Stripe to create a new thing called a checkout session. A checkout session is a, a, uh, an object that represents what the customer sees when they go through a payment flow and enter in all their payment details. So a checkout session requires a mode. In our case, it's subscription. It also requires some line items, which is an array of hashes. And in our case, 
um, we are going to pass in. So it, you can either pass in a price ID and the price ID is an ID of a price from the Stripe API that you've created. So either we can go create price objects for each of our newsletters, or we can sort of dynamically create prices on the fly by passing price data. So for now, we'll just use price data, but later on, we'll probably want to enable the authors to create prices or create a single price for the newsletters that they want to send so that not everyone is collecting the same amount of money. So the way this works is we create a, uh, we're passing price data with a currency and a unit amount. And so if we go look at the API reference for checkout sessions here, we're gonna create a checkout session. We need to pass line items. So inside of this object, we're gonna pass price data to dynamically generate a price. It needs a currency and either a product or product data. So we're gonna pass product data and product data requires a name. So this is gonna be um, newsletter.title. No, yes, okay. So let's look up the newsletter. Goals, newsletters .find membership params, newsletter ID. Okay. So then we also need to pass, yep, a unit amount. So that unit amount is going to be in the smallest denomination possible for the currency. So in the case of US dollars, we're going to be charging, in this case, $20 or 2,000 cents. This is recurring. So inside of price data, we want to pass recurring and the interval is monthly and we uh, we want to just like keep collecting until it ends. Um, the tax we're not going to set a tax behavior for now. The quantity on the line item in this case is always going to be one because it doesn't really make sense to subscribe multiple times unless maybe you're sort of buying 10 subscriptions for your company to all have seats on some newsletter. Uh, which we might add as, you know, future features or something, right? Okay. So in addition to line items, this, this should be fine for now. We're creating one line item that's going to have the name of the newsletter that we're subscribing to for $20 a month, USD. We're going to subscribe to one of those. In addition to line items, we want to have a uh, success URL. This is where the customer is going to be redirected um, after they successfully check out and a cancel URL where they will end up if they decide not to check out. I think the cancel URL should bring them back to this newsletter uh, path for the current newsletter. And then the success URL might, it might make most sense to bring them um, back to the same exact page actually. So let's bring them back to the um, newsletter path for the newsletter. And um, we want to add a query string parameter to this. Now this is odd because the URL that we want to pass as the success URL has to have these curly braces for the checkout session ID. Um, then we're, it's, it, it doesn't play nicely with the path method inside of Rails. So we're just going to concatenate the newsletter path with our query string param and this hard-coded session ID equals checkout session ID. Now when, we're, when customers are redirected back to the success URL, this checkout sessions ID will be in the query string parameter. So we can look up the checkout session later and use that if we would like to. And okay, so we've got our mode, line items, success URL, cancel URL, and that should be, ah, oh, right. Okay, we also want to pass a customer ID. So this customer ID is gonna be the current user's um, Stripe customer ID. Okay, so the, the Stripe customer ID is the ID of the customer inside of Stripe and is how we keep track of all of the subscriptions and payments for a given reader. For accounts, we created a separate account model. Let's do the same for customers so that we can keep track of any Stripe customers that are related to a given user. So we'll say Rails G model customer and it's gonna um, reference a reader. You can have a Stripe customer ID and that should be fine. So we'll open up this create customers migration and the foreign key here is gonna be two table users. The Stripe customer ID should be fine. And then we'll also add an index on, um, cust on customers for the Stripe customer ID to make lookup 
quick and that should be good to go. Rails DB migrate. Then we'll open up the user model and say that a user has many customers. Really, it should only probably only have one, but um, uh, we'll say, okay, so Stripe customer ID. It's gonna, we'll, we'll check to see if there's any customers. So if customers dot um, empty, then we wanna create a new one. So we will create a new Stripe customer. We're gonna pass in their email and then we will create a brand new Stripe customer. So we'll go over to the customer model and this is going to have the class name user. Okay. So when we create this, I think we called this Stripe customer ID, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is the Stripe customer underscore ID will be that customer's ID. Otherwise we're going to say customers.first.stripe customer ID. And that should give us back. So this is kind of like um, lazily create a Stripe customer on demand uh, when needed so that we always kind of like, well, create and cache one the first time that we actually need it. Let's see if this works. So let's open up Rails console, user.last.stripe customer. Well, actually, yeah, user.last.customers should be empty, right? User.last.customers, why is this failing? This is failing because customers.userid does not exist. Did we not? Ah, right, this needs to be foreign key is reader ID. Okay, so it's empty right now. So if we say user.last.stripe customer ID, boom. Okay, so notice how that like took a second and here we see an insert command going into the customer's database and that has a customer ID, NVC, blah, blah, blah. That is the ID that we got back. And if we try to call it again, we get back the same exact ID and it happens much quicker and no new customers inserted into the database. So this is kind of how we want this to behave. If you're familiar with the pay rails gem, so there is this pay rails Ruby gem that I highly recommend. It's maintained by uh, Chris Oliver, really solid way to integrate against Stripe. Um, this is how uh, this sort of works inside of there is that customers are lazily loaded as needed. Uh, okay, so now we're lazily creating customer IDs. Let's go back to our memberships controller. And now what we can do is pass in our customer as current user.stripe customer ID. All right, notice that GitHub Copilot keeps typing this payment method types with um, an array that contains the string card. This is an old way to pass in payment method types. You don't want to include this anymore because instead we want to use a new feature called automatic payment methods where we control which payment methods are displayed based on settings in the dashboard. Okay, so now we are creating this checkout session and we are, uh, we're creating a new membership. Let's also take uh, this membership params and, uh, and merge it with the, uh, the ID of the Stripe checkout session so that we can store that in the database. And then once it's saved, we want to, once the membership is saved, we want to redirect to the checkout session URL and we want to allow other hosts. Otherwise, if it was not saved, then we want to render new. Okay. Whew. All right. So what we need to do on our newsletter show page is inside of this form, we're going to add a form with the action memberships and the method is post and data turbo is false so that we can redirect. Uh, oops, slash form. Okay. And then we are going to have this subscribe button. Uh, type is submit. And let's go grab a button from the newsletter index. So we'll just grab this class. Okay. And then inside of this form, we also need a input, a hidden input with the value 
newsletter ID. And the newsletter, actually, I think this should be membership newsletter ID. Um, the value of that newsletter is going to be, this is, this is the name. The value is going to be this newsletter.id. We also need a hidden input with the CSRF token. So the name is going to be authenticity token. And the value is going to be form authenticity token. So that we are going to be okay with CSRF. All right. So let's go back to our show page here. All right. So we've got the subscribe button. When we click on subscribe, we are finding no route. Let's go to routes. Make sure that we have our memberships in here. Res resources, memberships, um, continue. Okay. Before filter should be called before action. This used to be called before filter in an old, old version of Rails. Okay. Uh, continue. Uh, not a valid URL. Okay. So, hmm. oh, right. Okay. Memberships controller. So when we use the path helper methods inside of rails, these are relatives. So this is going to give us slash newsletters slash one or something like that. Right. But we want it to be HTTPS local host 3000 newsletters slash one. So uh, what we want to do is instead of using path, we want to use underscore URL here. Okay. Refresh the page and boom, we are redirected. Okay. And we see subscribe to my newsletter too. We have our email address pre-populated and we are able to sign up. This is fantastic. We can pay with link if we want at the top, which is super fast. All right. But what you're wondering at this point is where in that checkout session creation, did we tell Stripe that we wanted some of the money to be transferred to the author and we didn't. So when creating a checkout session, we can pass in this subscription underscore data parameter here, and this will configure what happens on the subscription that is ultimately created by checkout. One of the things we can do is add an application fee percentage. So if we wanted to take uh, just a percentage of the subscription, we can do that here. We can also pass transfer data. Now this transfer data, we can pass in a destination. This destination is the ID of the Stripe account where we want some of the funds every month to be transferred to. So what we're going to do is pass in here subscription data. And this is where we're going to pass in information about our transfer data so that we can have a destination. And the destination is going to be the newsletter's author's Stripe account ID. So let's go to the newsletter and make sure that it has an author and it does. And let's make sure that an author has a Stripe account ID. It does not. So let's go down here and say Stripe account ID. And this is going to be our default account Stripe ID. That should be just fine. Okay. Now we know where some of the money should go to. Now we need to tell it how much should be, we either need to tell it how much money should be transferred or how much money we want as an application fee. Recall uh, when we talked about charge types a few episodes back, there are two ways to use destination charges. One is to use an application fee to take a cut. Another is to transfer a little bit less than the total amount when you're transferring. So what we're going to do now is we'll just say that we want to, uh, we want to transfer, uh, 95% of the money to the destination. Okay. So this is going to be a, a decimal between zero and a hundred, and it's going to be the percentage of the subscription invoice that's going to be transferred to the destination account. So this is something that we might negotiate on a, um, author by author basis. So it's possible we end up some, with something like newsletter dot account dot, um, you know, like, uh, negotiated fee percent or something. And that's the sum amount that we have agreed to with that account holder or with that author. Um, but for now, again, we'll just use 95%. Also, this should be author. Okay. Newsletter.author.stripe account ID. 
And all right, so let's see if this works. So we're gonna go back, refresh our page and say subscribe and accounts.default does not exist. Oh, right, okay, so user default, it's like a default account, I think. Oh, we can't subscribe again. We already subscribed. Okay. So yeah, I'm just going to shortcut it. We'll just assume that it's going to work as expected. We'll just say membership dot destroy all for now. Refresh and we'll go back through the flow. We will need to handle the edge case. We'll come back and handle it later. But for now, I want to just like go through this and show what this might look like. So we can enter 4242, um, Jenny Rosen. And okay, all right. And we'll say subscribe. Processing, processed, and we were redirected back here where we now have the ID of the checkout session. You'll also notice if we look in the server logs that we handled a bunch of different events that are still being, I believe, still being piped in, maybe. Okay, so it's possible we lost our event. Yeah, our event piping. So let's, um, in, instead of needing to start Stripe listen every time, um, So what we had was uh, forward to localhost 3000, right? So this is the command that we use to start our Stripe listen local webhook tool. Instead of needing to start this every single time, we're gonna copy this and move it into procfile.dev so that this also starts up every time we start bin dev so that our, um, our webhooks will continue piping through. Okay, so let's find another newsletter. So let's go back here to our dashboard. And uh, okay, so newsletter test one, two, three. Okay, we click on subscribe. We're redirected to checkout. We click on subscribe, processing, processed, that comes back. Okay, so now we should have, right. Okay, so we've got some event jobs that we need to handle. One of them will be checkout session completed. Right, checkout.session.completed is one of the event types that we need to handle. The other is going to be customer.subscription.created. And we will want to listen to several different webhooks related to the subscription starting so that we can keep track of whether or not the user is actually subscribed. Okay, so before we go too much further, let's take a look at this and just review what, what's happening now. Let's also look at the dashboard and we can come over here and see if those payments went through and kind of how they look on the connected account. So we have this author, right? So Jenny Rosen is the author and she received uh, two transfers. One is for um, 19 and 19, right? So here we go. Uh, payments, each were for 19 and then we as the platform should have kept one dollar each so we had these subscriptions that were created we collected twenty dollars for each of them and we paid the stripe processing fees right okay so at the end of that right so our balance is going to be up just a hair okay all right so that that is um sort of how that might look Another thing we want to do later is come back and make it so that the author can view their payouts. So we probably want another button here that says like view my dashboard so they can log into the express dashboard. Uh, we've got plenty more to do in the next episode. I want to come back and we'll look at how we can handle those webhook events for updating the membership with the correct subscription status from Stripe. And that will let us know whether or not we have a paying reader of our newsletter. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.